So firstly, um, my uh, job is to really talk about, um, about uh, the strategic base uh, of financial planning. And when we talk about financial planning, we often have it confused with investment advice. And whilst investment's obviously a financial, uh, uh, an important part of financial planning, there are only one element of what is a holistic strategy uh, comprising of many parts. Strategic planning is not risk profiling. It's not a pro process of answering a questionnaire that's all about investment risk uh, to get categorised as a client type plugged into a computer and, a, and it spits out an investment strategy. Strategy planning is a whole lot more important and a whole lot more complex than that. Strategy planning elements consist of a whole raft of things and they're all very much tailored and personally attributable to each and every, different pers every person differently. Things like tax minimisation, cash flow, debt reduction, uh, capital expenditure requirements, uh, capital growth, pre-retirement strategies, retirement strategies into estate planning. They're really a life plan uh, and the strategy itself is the blueprint, blueprint for building your financial future. Strategy must be objective based. Until you specify the objectives, you can't design the strategy. So it's really a matter of, uh, of, of looking at your personal circumstances and the things you want to achieve, short term, medium term, long term, and then developing a strategy that will achieve all of those outcomes. Often strategy planning can involve not only a financial planner, it more than, more than likely is going to involve an accountant to look at tax structures and various tax issues, uh, and a lawyer for estate planning issues. So really you need to have a group of professional advisors working for you and talking together uh, and, and they need to be uh, active and pro proactive uh, working to achieve the outcomes that you desire. Strategy is not a set and forget issue. Um, strategy is a living thing. And over time your circumstances will change and so your strategy has to train, change with it. And sometimes as we know uh, th through life things happen that we don't expect and we need to be able to have the flexibility and the adaptability to change strategy and adapt with those unforeseen circumstances. So that your relationship with your financial planner and your other professional advisors needs to be dynamic and it needs to be update, your situation needs to be updated constantly. We're going to be talking to you tonight about uh, elements of strategic planning uh, and in particular minimising death taxes and multi-generational uh, wealth transfer and in order for me to, uh, to um, provide an uh, introduction to my colleagues, um, we really need to talk to you about our philosophy so that you can understand how we put together these things. Our philosophy has been developed over 25 years of experiencing various market corrections and financial disasters, beginning with the stock market crash of 1987. We, we established uh, our business in financial planning in October 1985. Uh, and just had established when the market fell 39% in one day in October 1987. As a result of that, we've developed a, a philosophy which really is about <coughs> clients retaining ultimate control over their wealth in terms of their strategy planning, their investments and their investment outcomes. We believe that they must be protected from the consequential ac actions of others and be masters of their own destiny. Prior to the 87 crash, our clients were invested predominantly in managed funds. And following the market crash, we were virtually helpless to restructure and take advantage of, of obvious opportunities were in the market. So not only were our clients at that time victims of the market crash itself, but the subsequent subsequential actions of others and the inability for fund managers to react. We've seen the same outcomes recently, where funds have underperformed or have been frozen. And in fact, there are still over $20 billion of funds frozen in, in, uh, in managed funds and have been that way for the last two years. For that reason, in 1988, we created individually management, managed accounts on behalf of our clients. This entails individually managed and designed strategies, taking into account all of the elements that I mentioned earlier and any specific personal matters relative to each client. Once the strategy is determined and we individually tailor and manage investment strategies for each client, ensuring that the strategic objectives are achieved. 
Investments are chosen for appropriate fit and predictable outcomes, not flavour of the month. And our clients own and control their own investments under our stewardship. We are high conviction, low risk, direct investors. All of our clients have direct shares, direct property, direct fixed interest and exchange traded funds. We rarely use managed funds because we can't control them and we can't, we can't predict their outcome. We stay at the quality end of the market and we have an absolutely disciplined management process. Our 25 years experience has taught us that we can achieve greater returns for less hurt through this methodology and our clients return, retain ultimate control over their destiny. And our results prove it. These are, because all of our accounts are individually, individually managed, we, we aren't able to have a total return. So we've taken a randomly selected 60 US self-managed superannuation fund clients, and this is the average return over those funds. And as you can see, um, despite the last three years of probably the worst market conditions in living memory, uh, we've managed to get back into positive territory. But I think the interesting thing I'd like you to take note of is the income line. And the income line throughout the, the, the period is pretty much constant. And this is one of, the, one of the specific outcomes that we aim to achieve. That if the market falls and your income remains intact, then you can, you can live through it. Uh, and so that's, we're, we're very proud of that, uh, of that statistic. By comparison to the market, uh, this is the average multi-sector balance fund uh, according to Morningstar research. And as you can see, apart from the fact that our returns are net of all advice and management fees, where the fund returns are gross, we've clearly outperformed the, the, uh, the um, market in, in all one, three and five year periods. And as I said before, our strategies aren't high risk. Uh, it's really a matter of, uh, of uh, responsible selection and, and disciplined process of management. So with that background, we're going to talk to you in some more detail about specific issues and strategies with, uh, with examples of how they work. Uh, and particularly, as I said, debt tax minimisation and multi-generational wealth planning. But I'd like to leave you with one final point. Wealth management isn't about number crunching, about research, about analysis, uh, about legislative um, analysis. Whilst they're the things we do every day of the week, we're really in the people business. Our job is to make sure that our clients are looked after, that our clients achieve their, their goals, uh, and it's really about you, it's about your kids, it's about your grandchildren, it's about what you're looking to achieve in your financial life. So when we look at a portfolio, sure, we're going to look at the uh, technical details of it, but we're going to say, is this portfolio achieving the strategic outcomes that we promised that we'd achieve in the first place? And there's always references back to the strategy plan, and the strategy plan always has to reference to today, so it needs to be updated all of the time. It's an emotional journey and sometimes very emotional, particularly when uh, the markets fall, great when the markets go up. Uh, but we share it together and, and uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we believe this, um, what the financial planning and management business is all about. Mm -hmm.